in the last video we got finished all up with our auto our text our place autocomplete suggestion text box up here so I can search a location uh, now I can click on it and it will navigate me to that location now I want to add some custom information so that when I click on this uh, marker it's not just going to tell me the location it's going to tell me the address the phone number the website all that good stuff so that's what we're going to get started on in this one it should be pretty short actually so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this whole move camera method I'm gonna paste it and then I'm gonna change one of the input parameters to a place info object so in other words I'm gonna override the method and then I can get rid of this kind of stuff here and then so at the bottom when we when we move the camera I'm going to just pass the place so do m place right there and I've commented out the attributions because there seemed to be an issue with that so I'll leave that commented out and so then we're gonna place uh, send the place as an input basically and then into the move camera method right here so when we move the camera the first thing I want to do is actually clear the map so I'm gonna clear all the markers off of the map and then we're gonna check to see if place info is, is null so if place info does not equal null then we're gonna proceed and I'm also going to surround this in another try catch because some of these other parameters could also be null, which would crash the app. So null pointer and do log e and pass that null pointer in there. E dot get message. And so now inside of here, we're going to create a, a snippet, a little text snippet, and it'll say this is what's going to go inside of the the little marker text box. So place info dot get address and then plus and do new line and then I'm just going to repeat this over and over again a bunch of times for each one of the properties so plus we need phone number we'll do website and also the price rating so address phone number website and price rating and the price rating is going to be on a scale from one to five five being the most expensive one being the least expensive and Google does that for us. We don't need to do any calculations or anything like that. So get the website and then get get rating. And I can get rid of that and put a semicolon here. So then we can create our, our marker options object. So marker options options equals new marker options just like we were doing before. Uh, actually I can do a semicolon and we need to append some options. So First of all, we'll do the position, so we can just do the latitude and longitude, like that. And then we want to append a title, and the title will just be the place info get name. And then we're going to append a snippet. So we do snippet, and then pass that snippet that we just created. And that's pretty much it. Then we just set the marker to the map. So let's do mmap set, or what is it, add marker add marker and then we can pass our marker options and that should be it oh actually what we're gonna need to do is create a global marker object because we can set the options like this but when we still need to add an onclick listener to the marker itself so let's go up to the very top and we're gonna create a marker uh, marker object so private marker marker m marker and then go down into our method that we were just in and we can go m marker equals m map dot add marker and then pass the options so then we have a global marker that we can deal with and i guess let's also handle the case for if the place info is is null we can just do uh, m map dot add marker and then do new marker options and we'll just do uh, position for the latitude and the longitude. And that way it will still add the marker, it just won't have any extra information on it. And instead of just actually putting an onclick listener onto the marker, let's create a, a separate widget for displaying information. So if you remember what I did in the test app, I had a little icon here with an exclamation mark. So I'll see if I can I'll bring it open here, this right here. So this will actually then bring the information up or it will close it. And I think that's actually a much better way to do it. So we'll go down to uh, the activity map layout and I'll create a new image view widget. Image view and it's just going to be 40 dp 
by 40 dp. And we'll do, uh, I don't have a, an image source yet, so we gotta do below ID of relative layout one. And we'll do margin, nope, margin left to 10 dp, and margin top of 10 dp. And then scale type center crop, just like we did with the other image. And we'll give it an ID of place info. Uh, maybe we'll give it 15 dp to the top. Okay, so now let's get that, uh, well, what's going on there? Get that new drawable. So go to, whoops, resources, right click on drawable, go to new image asset, and do action bar and tab icons. And what are we going to call this? We'll call it IC info and click the icon. And, ooh, I have no idea what this is called. Info? Oh, yeah, that should be good. Info. Got it the first time. Uh, and then we'll set a color of black and get rid of the padding. And that looks about what we want. So then we can just set our source after that gets imported. Source. And I see info. And there we go. So we got our ID, IC info. Okay, we can close project pane and we can go back to map activity. And let's create that new image view widget up top here, wherever it is uh, here. So actually we can just do comma, just do M info and then into on create, whoops, M info close image view, find view ID, r ID dot IC info. That should be the that was what I named it, wasn't it? Play on oh, place info. Place info still didn't show up. Okay, we're gonna have to rebuild. Okay, there we go. That's good. Now we're gonna go down into our init method, and we're gonna put an on click listener onto that info button. So, do m info set on click listener new on click listener, and now we can handle that those situations. So clicked place info, and we're gonna add a try catch here. Catch the null pointer. And then inside of our try catch, we can say if, oh, that was not what I wanted. So if the marker dot is info window shown, so if it's showing, then we want to do m marker dot hide the info window. And otherwise, we want to display the info window. So we do m marker dot show info window. And we can log it, so place info. Uh, what can we do? We want to do m place. We can just do two string and that will print out all the info for that particular location. And that should be good. So let's run it and see if our information is being displayed. And map is ready. Let's go to Universal Studio since that's what we've been going to this whole time. And that keyboard still isn't closing. Let's click on the info and okay we do get some info but it doesn't look like it's working correctly it looks like it's all appending to a single line so if i look at the log i wonder if it printed out all the information so yeah it does actually have all the information you have the website you have the phone number you have all that stuff but um it's not it's not displaying it all in that window so putting it away works and displaying it works but it should show all the information there I thought maybe we could get away with not having to build a custom info window adapter, but it looks like we're gonna have to build a custom one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a separate layout just for the info window, and then we're gonna make an adapter class to adapt our view to that uh, window. But uh, this video is getting kind of long, so I'm just gonna stop this one here, and that's what we're gonna do in the next one.